तो गाइस टेल मी हाउ इज इट गोइंग क्वेश्चंस किए एमसीक्यूज अंकल मेटीरियल Uh, but as I said, uh, ah, of course, yeah. I spoke to them yesterday, okay. so about the material, and they said that uh, they haven't received the material from the uh, from from Glam itself, right? Okay. Once okay. they get it, they are going to send it to everyone. So that's the response yeah. that I received. Just make sure that you follow up with them, okay? Yeah, yeah. Yesterday I have tried uh, reaching them. Uh, mm. so maybe i'm expecting you can yeah but you but you can anyways read the uh, read the soft copy right online yeah 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 ha uh, so let that not be an excuse to not read it soft copy se at least pad lo yeah i have okay. gone through them uh, there are a couple of questions like a three or four uh, i will mm-hmm. make sure with them yeah no you 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 have couple of questions for me that's what you mean right the part one uh, yesterday what we have gone through the part one uh, section so you one. have some doubts do you have some doubts and uh, no i am good with okay I mean, what i mean to say yeah. uh yeah mm-hmm. i have gone through the questions mhm uh which are like a uh, three or four questions i have i'm Oh, you've you. just gone through. You've just gone through three or four questions, and you don't have any doubts. Okay, I'm yeah. just saying that make sure that you read everything. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Raju, did you read? Did you go through the balance videos? Ah, uh, no, sir. Actually, I have to listen your uh, yesterday's video today itself. Then I will complete the MCQs. Okay. Yeah. Complete. कर लो कि don't come unprepared. Sure, sir. Sure, sir. Okay. Okay, Dwijit, welcome. Were you there yesterday? I think you were there. No, no, no. no yesterday I, I wasn't there. So you were in the orientation. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. I was there in orientation class. So any reason you were not there yesterday? Yeah, yesterday I I I didn't uh, knew about the uh, class. So I I just checked. Uh, yesterday when is the class today so i i came to know yesterday there were friday and saturday were the class i thought saturday and sunday uh... no class is on saturday and sunday uh so just make sure that you are aware of when next class is okay weekend. okay Prepare accordingly don't miss the classes yeah uh because then it becomes tiresome for anyone to go back to the video and listen to a video Right. Yeah. Just make sure that you attend the class and be on time. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh. Okay. And what else? Okay. Yeah. That's about it. Now, in terms of in terms of the material, the next couple of pages. So, if you look at it, strategic management and planning. This way. then there is this whole section about globalization okay and globalization is just some general uh, material about globalization right what is globalization what is green field project uh, what do you, what are the different foreign market entry strategies then you have the global environment per capita income kya hai competitiveness kya hai okay all right i'm not going to go through all of that because uh isme conceptual kuch nahi hai it is more like it's more like gk okay so i'm not going to go through it just read it and uh, uh yeah just read it and if you have a doubt just let me know but it's very simple for example to compromise two compromise strategies adopt elements of broad strategies okay global strategy global strategy is what 
seeks the benefits of localization. So if you would have seen the HSBC ad, uh, be global, think local. Have you seen that at the airport anytime? HSBC ka? Yeah, guys. Or maybe a video, uh, yeah, maybe a video ad, right? That is local strategy. It seeks the benefit of localization, flexibility, proximity, and adaptability, and global integration. So you are global in your thought process, uh, in your uh, overall approach, but you adopt the local, local uh, characteristics for the benefit of your business, right? So that is local. And what is NAFTA? That is North American Free Trade Agreement. It is an agreement between us canada and mexico so just general knowledge it's not uh, something conceptual which you need to understand right yeah, you need to apply it's more like you read it and once you read it uske around questions aayenge no, uske around nahi uh, the questions will ask you material pertaining to what you have read okay uh, Whereas when I say conceptual, I mean that you read something, you have to also assess the meaning of it, and then you have to apply it to various situations. Okay, so this is not that kind of uh, topic. So if you say, even if you look at uh, questions, right? So globalization. An advantage of a direct investment strategy when entering a foreign market is what? So now when you look at direct investment strategy wala concept, right? Mahape advantages be the that these are the advantages. So they are asking you from there. A global firm has what? Has achieved economies, plans, operates, coordinates, business globally, relies on indirect export, tend to to rely more on one product market so plans operates and coordinates business globally that's the definition of a global form so this is more definition facts meanings uh, not meanings definition facts general knowledge kind of stuff and let me know if you have any questions okay now any questions so far doubts questions please raise your hand or unmute yourself and ask me that let's go through study unit two which is organizational behavior and performance measures right different kind of organization structures uh, would invoke invoke means they create different kinds of behaviors in the people right and why you would say that why is it important from an internal audit standpoint it is important from an internal auditor standpoint because uh, because when you just a moment, let me flip the camera okay now you will feel like i'm talking to you right so Do you find me looking at you now? Yes. Okay. Yes. Good. So yeah. So I was saying that different kind of organization structures have a different impact on the behaviors of the people in that organization, right? And why is it important for us? It is important for us because as internal auditors, when we are working with an organization, when we are working with a client, we need to know what sort of an organization culture, organization structure they have, what kind of incentives that they have for work, right? How is their performance measured? This is important for us to assess the controls and how people will 
behave in an organization. Because when we talk about implementation of a control, or when we try and understand that what kind of controls are there and whether people are sincerely applying the controls or not, why are they not applying the controls or why are they not implementing the controls or exercising the controls, the organization culture plays a big role. And the organization culture is impacted by how the organization is structured. So for example, if you are dealing with an organization which is very autocratic in nature, and why is it very autocratic in nature? It is very autocratic in nature because the founder is a very uh, is a, is an is an alpha personality. Alpha means a very aggressive personality who's maybe created the organization from ground up. It is my way or the highway kind of attitude, right? In that kind of an uh, organization you will see that controls operate differently. Whereas when it like in that kind of an organization, you may see things which are not logical, but they happen. For example, you would be like each and every expense voucher needs to come to me for approval, right? Now that would mean a utter waste of time uh, and efforts, right? Because there are vouchers which have not been approved by him because he's traveling, right? I'm sure that all of us have encountered those kind of organizations. You will see that certain things which are not okay are being done just because the boss said so, right? He's the one who has charged certain expenditures uh, which are personal in nature. There was a business trip, so not only did he go on a business trip, but he took his family also around along with him, right? And in the credit card statement, you see that there are a lot of family or personal expenditures. Now, uh, you would you would say that in this kind of an organization, the management override is also significantly high. You tend to the the management tends to override controls whereas against that if you come across or if you work with a professionally run company there is a proper structure there are different layers within the organization uh, there are policies and procedures people cannot do things by their whims and fancies correct so all this will have a different impact on the controls because there's a mechanism, because there are policies and procedures which are documented, updated, people are trained, people are made aware of those policies and procedures. Uh, and there are, in, there are monitoring mechanisms in place to make sure that the intent of the management is being carried out properly or is being or in the objectives are being fulfilled you will see that the control structure is much more much more rigorous or much more robust correct which you would not see in case of the other uh, founder driven or a very dictatorial or autocratic kind of an organization does it make sense any questions Yes. So that's the reason why we need to understand the organizational behavior. How are they monitoring performance? So, with that, 
couple of things here, right? Organizational behavior, what are we going to cover? Organizational theory, motivation need-based theories and rewards, motivation process-based theories, behavior, job design, others, organizational politics and group dynamics, performance measures, performance measures, cost of quality and balance scorecard, right? So first is the general organizational theory. Then the theory about motivation. What motivates people? And that is important because the way they operate in the organization depends all about the kind of motivation strategies that we have set up for them. What are the group dynamics? Like, I'll give you an example of a group dynamic. Let's say you are sitting in a conference room with some employees, right? And you ask them certain questions. Let's say all of them are friends and they are at the same level. And if you ask them questions about the management, and if you note down their responses to those questions, okay? Or if you ask them to vote on a particular topic and they all vote the way they want to. Okay. So park this scenario for a moment. Another scenario is where their boss is also sitting with them, right? Their individual bosses are sitting with them. So you have a group of four people, three of them have one boss, the other organize uh, the other associate has another boss right so there are two bosses they were not there before so in the room it was you and the whole employees and you ask them certain questions you ask them to vote on certain things right now the next time it is you plus six people the four associates and their bosses okay if you ask a question and if the bosses say yes, that is the case, they agree with the scenario that you have asked, do you think that will have an impact on the way the employees vote on that particular matter? The second time around, yes or no? So let me make it very simple, okay? Uh, for example, let's say if I ask you and your colleague in person, yeah, what do you think? Canteen ka khana kaisa hai? And you'll be like, hey, papa, say, yaar, okay? Okay, in any situation, when you and your colleague are there and your boss is also there, and I'm an outsider, and I come and say that, you know what? Sir, uh, how's the canteen food here? And your boss says, oh, the food is lovely. We have this wonderful caterer who cooks some amazing dishes. I even forget what my wife, uh, how uh, wonderful my wife cooks, right? And then he looks at you. What are you going to tell him? Do you like the food or not? Yeah. You better say that you love the food at the canteen, right? That's group dynamics. Okay. Or let's say there is a, there is a uh, unsatisfied employee, right? Or what you call a disgruntled employee. Disgruntled employee, what will he do? He will irrespective of the quality of the food, he will be like, it's all pathetic. Everything is bakwas, right? I'm not getting any feedback. I don't know what, what's going on. Yes, no thumbs up, no thumbs up, nothing. Yeah, okay. So that's all group dynamics. So group dynamics and politics play a role in the way the organization operates. And as internal auditors, uh, by the way, thank you for that feedback. So as internal auditors, 
it really matters because the group dynamic, the politics of the organization, the organization structure, all have a bearing on the way people behave, the way people implement controls, the control environment in general, uh, the attitude of the people towards the processes, policies, right? Uh, so that's where we really need to know all these things, okay? Now, let's start looking at the organizational theories. So, starting with what's an organization, right? It's a social entity that is goal-directed and deliberately structured, okay? There is a common goal and there is a structure. Now, the structure can be different. It can be a flat structure. It can be a hierarchy, right? It can be a matrix organization. There can be different structures, but it is deliberately structured. Deliberately structured means it has been set up in a way which the, uh, which the organization feels is appropriate for achieving certain goals. Okay. There are four elements of an organization. Coordination of effort in a cooperative social environment, right? We coordinate our efforts and we cooperate with each other. There's a common objective. There's division of labor. Everyone doesn't start working. Uh, everyone doesn't uh, uh, do everything. People specialize. So there is efficient work specialization. There's a hierarchy of authority. Okay. What is authority? Authority is a legitimate right to direct. And authority and responsibility go hand in hand. If I make you responsible some, for something, then you should also have authority to do certain things, take certain decisions. Because without the authority, uh, the responsibility is just a burden. Right? Um, so authority is the legitimate right to direct and expect performance from others to achieve the organization's goals. Those people are accountable to their superiors in the hierarchy. Okay. Guys, is everyone able to hear me clearly or only Raju is facing a problem? No, I am able to hear you, Uncle. Okay. So in the middle, you? Yeah, in the middle, sometimes your voice is getting strapped, uh, Uncle. Is it? Yeah. Okay. So multiple mm -hmm. times, you mm -hmm. are sir. Is it? What about you, Dwijit? Yeah, 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 same, same, some uh, poor connection is showing sometimes. Aapka red color dikha raha hai, network. Red uh, network. Mm. Aapka video bhi nahi aara. Nahi, video toh mene ban ki hai. But okay, I am, I am absolutely perfectly connected. Koi issue nahi hai mere side pe. I think it has got to do with the web browser because I am joining from the web browser. What I am going to do is I'll make sure that I download Zoom. Okay. So right now I have not downloaded the Zoom application. So that might be the reason. Uh, wait a minute. Let me see.
Okay. Bear with me for today at least. Okay. I will make sure that I download the Zoom application soon. Okay. No worries, sir. Please carry on. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Test of an organ. Yes, this is an important concept. You will see effectiveness and efficiency being used a lot of uh, different places. Right? What is the difference between effectiveness and efficiency? We discussed, I mean, a lot of people who, have, uh, who are here, we discussed this in the past. Effectiveness is achievement of goals by providing value to customers over time in a narrow sense, right? So when I say, that I have to reach from Bangalore to Hyderabad. If I reach there, okay, in time, then I'm effective. I've achieved the goal. I was supposed to reach at 9 a.m. I reached at 9 a.m. My friend was supposed to reach at 9 a.m. He also reached at 9 a.m. Okay. But when he went, the way he planned his route from Bangalore, he only spent 500 rupees to reach to Hyderabad, let's say. I ended up spending 5,500 because I took a flight. Okay. So both of us have been effective, but he has been more efficient. Right. Because Efficiency is the ratio of output to the input. He is able to provide more value at a lower cost. Okay. So that is effectiveness and efficiency. Then comes productivity. Productivity is the ratio of real output to a unit of input. It's basically a ratio output per unit of input. So the number of, uh, let's say, the number of products verified for quality per minute, right? Or number of products produced per hour. This is all a, a definition of productivity. Goal of the organization is increase productivity, obviously, in a capitalist economy, of course. Um, okay, next on page forty one, I mean the remaining whatever I am skipping, you can read it, that's okay. Nothing complex there. Organizational charts. What is this? These are formal organizational structures in two dimensions, right? They often resemble a pyramid with the CEO on the top and the operating workflow workforce on the bottom. Like we also, as internal auditors, when we go and audit a new organization, that is where we begin. We ask them for the organization chart, we understand who is responsible for what, right? Through an organization chart. Within that chart, lines show reporting relationships, the lines of authority and the task groupings. Okay. Uh, what is a shortcoming of an organization chart? The shortcoming is that Organizational charts do not show informal relationships. Very important shortcoming. Okay. Communication, influence, power, or friendship. This is not seen in case of an organizational chart. So many a times you would come across an organization and while talking to them, you would realize that someone who is actually lower down the rung, as in who is, um, who does not have the same position as his superior, 
has actually more influence than the superior. Now, for example, we used to go and audit a facility, a factory in Gujarat, right? A chemical factory in Gujarat, where the factory head was quite highly respected, but he had only two, two years of service to go. As against that, there was a 29 year old engineer within the organization uh, who had started like five years back. But everyone listened to him because he came from a reputed um, uh, college, right? Uh, he was a very bright engineer. And then everyone else was middle-aged uh, and very traditional India uh, approach. So when he spoke, when this young engineer spoke, the top boss listened to him and everyone else also listened to him. So from an organization standpoint, he was still middle management. But from an influence standpoint, he was senior management. Right. So if you look at the organizational chart, you will see that, oh, he comes, he is, let's say the top is T, then he is T minus two. But from an influence standpoint and what he can get done, he is at level T. Does that make sense to everyone? Yes, uncle. Okay. Yeah, so that's the shortcoming of an organizational chart. Now, uh, the, within the organizational chart, there is a concept of flat organization also. So what has happened is, there is increased span of control and decreased hierarchy. Meaning instead of having multiple levels, manager and senior manager, then associate director and director. What has happened is um, people, I mean, the organization levels have decreased. You see this? This is a higher. Let me know if you can see my screen. Okay. This is a hierarchical structure, whereas this is a flat organization. But a flat organization does not necessarily mean only one boss and then everyone else is at the same level. It just means that more flatter than usual, right? So a much lesser middle management than a typical hierarchical structure. You can see, you can look at this, then you can see this is different flat organization structure this is similar then you can have some other yeah this one flat organization structure see director manager manager this is no associate director senior manager manager or sub director manager manager and then you have all employees Okay, so with the span, increase in the span of control, uh, what has happened is the organization structures are now flatter. Okay, now we come to the uh, theories of organization, right? There's a classical perspective 
what does a classical perspective say it was the classical perspective is during the industrial revolution of 1910 earlier 20th century 19th century is what your 1800s and 20th century is your early 20th century is your 1900s uh, during the world war 1 world war 2 it address labor productivity issues resulting from the need to manage large number of workers in the factory so what happened is during that time when the due to the war and at the same time a lot of technological development the industrial and the industrial revolution took place at that time right germany started massively producing iron ore uh steel from iron ore right because they wanted to make uh, the make automobiles tanks weapons uh so on and so forth similarly in america there was a great revolution around increasing and improving the infrastructure so again a lot of industrialization took place which resulted in employing large number of workers from villages and other suburban areas not suburban areas from the villages rural areas suburbs came later because so many people migrated from the rural regions to the cities there was a need to house them some place and that is where the suburbs came into picture but anyways the point is that because there was this large scale migration of people from the rural areas to the urban areas uh, for work in factories and facilities there was a need to manage all these people before that no no time in history were people being managed at such a at such a huge scale except in case of an army right and that's why a lot of the army principles are also used in case of running a factory or running an organization okay uh so so what are the classical perspective one was client, scientific management the people who thought about this particular approach they basically believe that that you know humans can be managed through certain scientific to through the use of certain scientific uh, theories and there's a science to managing people right and the focus was on the production process and how to make it more efficient it was systematic quantitative approach based on design of specific jobs that did not consider social environment and individual needs so people were treated more as resources than humans so if anyone has watched the old charlie chaplin uh, movies there was one particular movie i think it was called the city or the factory or something like that uh which was very hilarious but the beauty about that particular movie was that it showed how humans are just uh, a cog in the wheel a cog in the wheel means we are just another nut bolt in the whole apparatus or in the whole uh, machinery right does anyone know what i'm talking about yeah guys anyone the human race sure yeah, right. sorry the how we are running in this competitive world we are talking about yeah, yeah, yeah wait wait just a moment hold on it's called the modern times 
Uh, let me share my screen, okay? Anyways, you saw that? Hello. Yes. Yeah? So that's what I was talking about. So the scientific theory, uh, scientific management was all about making the jobs efficient. It was a systematic quantitative approach based on the design of specific jobs, right? So one bunch of, uh, a set of people just just tightening the nut holes. Another one just boxing uh, everything, right? And there was no focus on the people or the social environment in which they are operating or they are working, uh, uh, their working environment, things like that. And their individual needs. So what were the principles of scientific management? Scientific analysis to determine standard method. How can we standardize through time and motion study? Oh, it takes it takes one minute to close this or pack this box. So we have uh, we have two employees. Two employees into eight hours uh, is sixteen hours. Sixteen hours into sixty minutes, right? whatever that is 960 minutes so we should have 960 boxes that's the way it was, they approached it and uh, through time and motion study scientific selection training and development of workers so oh, we require someone of this size strength and training to do this work work right so scientific selection training development of workers planning the activities of the workers this is what you are this is what you will do this is where you will stand this is the way you will operate the machinery right so planning the activities of the workers offering compensation for higher output to improve productivity so you are supposed to do one box per minute if you do more than that okay so for every 10 boxes that you've done more in an hour, you will get, let's say, one dollar extra, something like that. So that was scientific management. Uh, the administrative principles approach was separated administration from technical, commercial, financial, and accounting operations. So administration was all about management. Uh, right. So the following function of the management are the basis for classification of manager's activity. Planning, organizing, commanding, coordinating, controlling. That is all managerial or administrative activity. Now let's look at some administrative principles. What is unity of command? Unity of command means one person will only have one superior. Okay, when you have one person has only one superior, it is easier to follow orders. That's where one of the administrative principles is we should have unity of command. Division of work is specialization. It improves the amount and quality of work for a given effort. 
if you do four different kinds of uh, activities in a day then you might not be as effective in uh, in building a product but if you do one if you are only doing one part of that building building as in building a product or constructing something or manufacturing something then you can be more effective now again the the fact that you may be bored to death doing this was not taken into consideration that was something which was later brought into perspective in the humanistic perspective uh, school of thought right when they realized that or in a if you treat people like machine they are going to burn out we also need to have a humanistic attitude so that is the humanistic perspective okay but under the scientific uh, scientific perspective division of work was uh, highly valued unity of direction results one manager is responsible for similar work activities so one manager is only going to focus on research one person is only going to focus on production within production also some specific machinery right so that is unity of direction the scalar chain of authority from the top to the bottom of the entity entity should include all employees means the chain of authority should include everyone basically okay then there was the bureaucracy that's the ultimate classical organization bureaucracy is the one uh, which is let's say adapted in government organizations in military the organization the bureaucracy is not considered to be a very modern word we can are a lot bureaucratic here it's not seen as a very modern thing right because it is a classical uh, perspective in what did bureaucracy require bureaucracy require uh, you know division of labor hierarchy of clearly defined authority written rules separation of ownership administrative acts and employees are hired and promoted based on qualifications like that is bureaucracy so it does not focus on who produces more how efficiently how can we do this faster right so they they are focuses more on following the laws rules a very specific way of doing things and that's why bureaucracy is considered to be slow every large organization has a bureaucracy so that doesn't mean bureaucracy is not seen it is seen in every large organization to some degrees but there are agile organizations who are less bureaucratic and hence are able to get things done faster for example tech organizations some of the tech startups are much faster in the way they roll out product or the way they address uh, problems as compared to some of the some of the big companies right uh, now i was reading an article right uh, some time back which said that even facebook and google are now have now become very bureaucratic in nature and it is very difficult to get things done because they have become so humongous now and there are so many layers within the organization right now and because every organization has some sort of bureaucracy managers should be aware of the symptoms of inefficient and otherwise dysfunctional bureaucracy such as ignoring the needs of customers and employees pointless rules boring jobs right managers should be aware that yeah because there is some sort of bureaucracy which creeps into the organization these kind of things can happen and while managers are aware of that 
we as auditors should also be aware okay that uh, sometimes the organization places more importance on the rules than on the needs of the uh, customer and the employees and the need to move faster to grab an opportunity right so many a times it will be really beneficial for the client if we are uh if we rationalize control if we identify controls which are useless which are not needed right in practice in practice we never challenge additional controls we are like okay we you have this control you have plus these two controls so great the control passes right we just end up testing the additional controls rarely have i seen a report where we tell the management that look these are the additional controls that you perform which are actually useless and redundant you should stop doing it right have you come across that scenario or rather have you ever challenged additional controls that these controls are not needed right okay then we come to the humanist perspective humanistic perspective it considers individual social and group needs and behaviors okay just one minute please okay so uh, the humanistic perspective considers individual social and group needs and behavior so they realize that yeah we cannot treat people like cogs in wheels right or just machinery uh, and we need to treat them in a human manner possible right so that is where this humanistic perspective came into be so what did the early researchers what did the proponents of this theory what did they come up with they said that we should have some sort of a superordinate goal to reduce conflict superordinate is what common why is that needed that is needed so that everyone feels like they are part of the team and they are working towards a common goal and because of that you have this vision statements and the mission statements and you join a company they make you go through that right what is these are our values this is our mission this is our vision right why do they want to do that they can just tell you na to start by yahan se shuru karo ye audit karo itna tick maro every day If they do do all that right they tell you about their vision mission all of that why because you are human you need to know what objective you are working on you need to feel like you are part of a group you are a social being so you want to be considered as part of a group you want to be you want to feel welcome and that's where a superordinate goal is very important correct if uh, one of the goals is sustainable manufacturing and everyone is working towards it the conflicts around use of sustainable material reduces right because everyone knows boss this is the value of the company this is what we do in this particular company so that reduces conflict 
okay they they like i said they realize that street let's not treat organization and people as machines and let's empower our employees one of the most important things about humans is that they want to feel empowered they want to feel like they are in control if they feel like slaves then they feel that they don't have any control or any say in a decision then they feel demotivated they feel burned out they undergo a lot of mental health issues right so that is where the humanistic perspective focused on empowerment of employees okay um and they realize that informal organizations also benefits the organizations if well managed in what clubs within the uh office social meetings informal groups friendships all that plays a very important role in managing the organization okay if employees needs are met productivity increases that's the human relations view your hr keeps on saying you know, oh what do you need we have this for the employees we have that for the employees right they are always trying to keep the employees happy why because when the employee morale is high productivity increases you want to go to office more you want to work you want to make sure that you do your bit so that you stay relevant in that particular organization and with your set of with the set of people that you like right uh the human resources approach is that job design should allow employees to reach their potential there's a difference human relations view is that if employee needs are met productivity increases human resources view is what when the jobs are designed in a way uh, a job should be designed in a way that employees reach their potential okay so the human resources approach also relates to theories of motivation wo baad mein aayega okay uh then you have the contingency perspective this i am not aware of so let's read it together the contingency perspective is that design of organization depends on contingencies that can be discovered and studied what is a contingency things that can happen something that may happen may not happen right uh no methods apply to all organizations because solutions are situationally determined the key is finding relevant factors in the organization's environment greater environmental uncertainty more adaptive the organization must be so for example the army right there is always an environmental uncertainty and that's why they are more adaptive contingency design determines the structure that suits the environmental uncertainty faced by the organization environmentally uncertainty is a function of stability of demand reliability of supply rate of technological change socio economical and political pressures this create environmental uncertainty so basically environmental uncertainty is created by these things right uh, is a function of many things but largely demand supply rate of technological change and social economical pressures and in case of a environmental uncertainty kind of an environment you need to be more flexible and adaptive however the contingency perspective does not assume that every situation is unique it applies similar responses to common problem i have no idea what they are talking about to be honest 
contingency perspective. See, this is much more, more better. Contingency perspective of an organization design is based on the theory that there is no best way to organize a corporation, lead a company, or make decisions. Instead, the optimal course of action is contingent, dependent upon the internal and external situation. Right? So as the situation evolves in light of environmental uncertainty around stability of demand, reliability of supply, technological change, social, economical and political pressures, the organization structure also needs to change. This was more helpful, right, guys? Yes. Everyone else? Wait a minute. I'm trying to look for food. So wherever there are these concepts which are not very clear, I Google them or I use chat GPT to go through it. I'm just sharing with you. Two pages, okay. You can go through that this as well. Has everyone copied it? Okay, good. Moving on. Now comes motivation. Okay. And motivation related theories. Motivation is related to what? It is also related to something that we studied. 
uh, in the earlier subunit. Yes, the human resources approach, right, and motivation. Both are very, very interlinked. So what is motivation? Motivation is a set of internal and external forces that stimulate enthusiasm to persist in a course of action. Right? Stimulate enthusiasm means you feel enthused, you feel energetic to persist in a course of action. Yeah, ye to karna hi hai. CIA pass karna hi hai. There is an internal motivation. I want to do it. I want to be better. I want to be a better internal auditor. I can I can audit better if I know this, right? There's an external motivation. Oh, my friend did it in the first attempt. Uh, he doesn't even have enough experience as much as I do. I should be able to do it. That's an external motivation, right? So what is motivation? It's a set of internal and external forces that stimulate enthusiasm to persist in a course of action. Now, the ideal management action motivates subordinates by structuring situations and requiring behaviors that satisfy the needs of subordinates and the organization. It means what? An organization which can structure the situations in a way which, which helps both the organization meet its objective and the, come and the employee meet his objective, that's a very good way of uh, motivating the subordinates, right? There are, that's a great action, management action, if we can achieve both this targets now what are rewards rewards are also two extreme extrinsic rewards and intrinsic reward intrinsic means built inside extrinsic means are received from others so money that you receive bonus that you receive respect that you receive acknowledgement that you receive from uh, the bosses, right? These all are extrinsic rewards. What are the intrinsic rewards of a job? Uh, the satisfaction that you get from making a good presentation, from writing a good report, from identifying good observations, the fact that you have helped the organization strengthen their country. Goals, the satisfaction that you get at the end of the day, intrinsic reward, right? Now, it's and in case of extrinsic rewards, extrinsic extrinsic threats and punishments use fear to motivate. An example is charging overweight employees more for health insurance, right? Or paying lesser bonus or paying no bonus. Those are ex extrinsic threats. This practice is based on loss aversion. Now, why do ex extrinsic th threats work or punishments work? Because we want to avert. Avert means avoid loss as humans. The amount of satisfaction or the amount of happiness that we gain from getting 20% more is much lesser than the loss that we feel or the sadness that we feel from losing in 5%, right? Or let me put it other way now. You feel more sad when you lose 5% of something than when you gain 20% of something. That is just human nature, right? So we are always trying to avoid loss. And because we are trying to avoid loss, extrinsic threats make a uh, motivate us to do better. Does it make sense? Yes. Right. 
and then there are sir, some employees who don't give a damn they are like screw it main nahi kar raha hu right unko kuch bhi koi bhi thread do unko koi farak nahi padta hai because they have given up right so in in their mind there is no loss aversion they have already surrendered so in their case extrinsic threats and punishments don't work for motivation okay uh then you have the equity theory what does equity theory say employee motivation is affected significantly by relative as well as absolute rewards what is relative and absolute rewards let's say i give you 10000 rupees okay that is a 10000 in itself is an absolute reward this is what i am giving but i only gave you 50% of what i gave to ritu so dilkush i gave you only 50% of what i gave to ritu that's a relative reward correct so equity theory says that employee motivation is affected not only by relative uh is significantly affected by relative as well as absolute reward so it does not does not matter that you got 10000 but it matters that ritu panjwani got 20000 right so relative as well as absolute rewards have a significant impact on a employee's motivation why because he compares the ratio of what she receives from a job to what she gives to the job with the ratios of relevant others what others have given and what they have received if the ratios are equal equity exists if they are unequal inequity exists right and the employees will be motivated to eliminate the inequity how will you eliminate the inequity you may alter inputs to the job you may do less like are yaar main itna kaam karti hu ritu to khali 4 ghanta kaam karti hai baaki 4 ghanta chai piti hai main to 10 ghanta kaam karti hu so you will also reduce your input or you will ask for a raise yaar mera 10000 kaam right or you would want a bigger job status so bahut bar boss gyan deta na or you would have seen organization me sometimes out of the blue you see additional layers which have been created there was a director director ke baad mein partner suddenly you have uh, executive director or there was a manager manager ke baad mein director tha suddenly you see oh ye saal se associate director kar diya or a level right when you ask them then they say oh organizational change is important there's a lot of work on the director so we wanted to add one more layer ye wo sab gyan right what they actually want to do is they don't want to pay that much right but they want to give employees an inflated sense of authority to compensate for the less pay that they are giving so agar aap dekhoge in case of the manager and the associate director the margin will be very less 5% hi rahega difference right but they don't want to make them directors or they don't want to make pay them more तो लोग क्या करते अरे प्रमोट तो किया ना यस हुआ है कि नहीं सबके साथ या ओके सो दैट इज व्हाट सो हाउ डू वी रिमूव द इनइक्विटी वी चेंज द परसेप्शन बाय इन्फ्लेटिंग जॉब स्टेटस इसमें और एक रिस्पांस भी है लीव द जॉब अरे नहीं है ना लास्ट में बी एन एक्सट्रीम रिस्पांस इज टू लीव द जॉब well extreme for the organization not for you if you are getting 40% rise so wow why not ye ho gaya need based theories of motivation abram maslow who has not heard about abram maslow needs to go back to college 
his theory was theory of self realization right so uh, yeah human needs are a hierarchy a triangle right up there is self realization but uh, the lowest needs are physiological needs all the physical basic requirements water food shelter sleep right first you need to satisfy this needs before you worry about the higher level needs then your security or safety needs wo hone ke baad the next is you want protection from physical or emotional harm then you want affiliation or acceptance uh as we are all social beings right so we want love affection friendship belonging esteem then you want respect esteem both by one self and others how are these needs satisfied through power prestige status and self confidence how do you get status you get status through designations the way the people treat you through various uh, uh, through authority through responsibility then finally is self actualization it's the highest need in the hierarchy it is the need to realize one's own potential for growth and continued development the job itself is an intrinsic motivation no extrinsic motivation is needed intrinsic motivation towards the worker with psychological utility so his thought process was extrinsic extrinsic i'm not able to say this word properly extrinsic motivation is not needed the job itself is intrinsic motivation that was his theory okay now the research supports that biological needs must be satisfied with the before other needs however strict order of hierarchy may not always apply in other cases so there can be a mix of these needs at different stages in life right physiological and safety needs tend to decrease in importance for fully employed people and need for acceptance esteem self actualization increase higher level needs esteem self actualization variable in their motivational effects depending on the individual someone may want something else more than uh than some of the other needs right someone may value esteem more respect more than being loved or liked like i like that person or you know i'm liked by my coworkers but am i respected for someone that is more important than just being liked now his theory does not apply equally in all situations that's important and it is dependent on social cultural and psychological backgrounds of people involved like for example if you are in a jail or a prison being respected is very very important if you ever watch one of those prison documentaries you would know then being respected is more important than being liked okay people of different cultures respond differently like for example in the american culture if uh, the colleagues or if the subordinates get pally with you then the boss would really like that he would feel appreciated that okay you know people are free to talk to me and they like hanging out with me in the japanese culture the respect is more important than anything else so they wouldn't appreciate being made fun of or being overly friendly because they they have a very specific hierarchical structure 
where elders get more respect uh, everyone else is supposed to follow so seniority matters a lot right so there respect is more important than just being liked or being friends with uh, someone so the theory of uh, needs as per abraham maslow that is dependent on social cultural and psychological backgrounds of the people involved kuch log bolte hain i am not here to make friends were very very like my son he tells me i was asked because he is not anti social but he is he is very picky about the kind of friends that he makes so he got into a new school recently and it's been just four days and he's like really making waves with the teachers and the counselors and i told him wo sab to theek hai but uh, are you getting along with the people here so but oh, that will all come later on i mean i'm not there to make friends i'm there to make sure that i is the class right so that's the thought process because people have different psychological backgrounds okay people of different cultures respond differently professional workers skilled workers unskilled workers react differently professional workers uh uh blue collar employees uh, will work i mean will operate differently from white collar employees right uh like for a factory worker the social bonding is more important he will stay there for 20 years work with the same set of people because he's made friends that's his family he will enjoy the festivals with them and he's okay with it someone who is an mba a chartered accountant he will not think twice about moving organizations he will think but uh, if there is growth monetarily or intellectually that person may move to another organization right so people react differently other social ethnic cultural factors make a difference in the way people react and the hierarchy is not smooth step by step path it is complicated and interdependent set of relationship however the tendency to move upward as lower needs are satisfied does exist so while it's not clear cut ye ho gaya then i will do this then i will do this there is a lot of intermingling of needs but but largely the tendency is to move up okay yes any question so far here here is a simplified version of maslow's hierarchy of needs i'm not reading this you can do it on your own okay kuch clarity chahiye to mere ko puchna there is a lot of material online as well right and this is all basic management gyan so i'm not going to go through that uh then you have douglas macgregor's theory x and theory y theory x is a perspective of the autocratic manager theory theory y is extreme opposite of theory x which is the permissive manager so one is a permissive manager which is theory y one is a autocratic manager which is theory x he is always thinking oh people don't like work people should be controlled and threatened most people want to be directed they lack ambition and primarily seek security they right? try to threaten them and make them insecure that is theory x i have had bosses with who are theory x bosses horrible bosses right and then there are theory y who say that okay uh 
control and threats don't work right commitment to objectives is proportional to the rewards of accomplishment reward milega to people will put in their effort people will seek to take responsibility human ability to use imagination and creativity to solve problems is common so basically a very positive uh, attitude and a very uh, what's the word basically a very positive uh, outlook of the human behavior is all theory y right theory x 9 Um. Yeah. So McGregor did not suggest that theory Y was the only correct managerial behavior. He suggested these theories as starting points from which a manager can examine his or her own views about human nature. Okay. Then you have the acquired needs theory. The need for achievement is satisfied by high performance and skill. So wait, what I'm going to do is I'm not going to read all of this, and I can give you examples, right, which I am giving you. But the point is. focus from an examination standpoint right so if we go to question 5 through 8 beginning of page 62 let's go to page 62 see what does the first one say frederick hersberg postulated a two factor theory of human behavior that included satisfies and dissatisfies which of the following is a dissatisfy Now Frederick का theory कौन सा था? Two factor theory, okay. वो जो page forty six पे जो हमने नहीं पढ़ा. Uh, then you have uh, what else? You have? An employee with good background and years of experience earns a salary at the top of his or her range. Under the company's compensation program, the employee must earn a promotion in order to increase his or her salary. Which of the following is most likely to be effective? to be an effect on the employee's behavior the employee ka behavior pe impact kiska padega what will have an impact on it? the employee may refuse new duties or task the employee may become less productive the employee may not be uh, motivated to improve performance the employee may seek a position with another company question kya tha under the company his compensation program so he is already earning a salary at the top of his or her range the employee must earn a promotion in order to increase his or her salary above the usual annual increase so kya karega may refuse new duties or task usko already he is earning at the top okay uh the employee may become less productive less productive to nahi banega because he has to maintain that the employee may seek a position with another company that is an extreme step right the employee may not be motivated to improve performance but if he is already earning at the top of his range and for earning a promotion in order to increase his or her her salary above usual annual increase to wo kya karega he most likely will leave the company right now what's the answer the answer is d may seek a position with another company the effect of an employee's behavior of the limitation on possible rewards when an employee can earn a desired salary increase only through a promotion she is less likely to be motivated to perform better if this does not result in a promotion she will probably look for another job right so when you read all of this theory is uska advantage is disadvantage is and how people will behave wo ek bar samajh mein aa jayega then you will be able to answer these questions okay and a lot of these questions will be very specific to those theories right like frederick hersberg का जो टू फैक्टर थियरी है उसके 
के अंडर क्या बोलता है वॉट इज थियरी एक्स मैनेजर हाउ विल ही बिहेव सो वंस यू अंडरस्टैंड हाउ द थियरी एक्स मैनेजर बिहेव उसके क्या कैरेक्टरिस्टिक है थियरी वाई के क्या कैरेक्टरिस्टिक है थियरी वाई मैनेजर इज अ मोर पॉजिटिव मैनेजर हु लुक्स एट द वर्ल्ड फ्रॉम rose tinted eye glasses basically he thinks everything is goody goody theory x wala thinks everything people need to be uh, scolded at to get work done that's his focus ye samajhne ke baad these questions are very simple to answer right but if you have never heard about theory x manager if you never heard about theory y manager then you don't know what to answer theek hai but just generally pad lo what it is and you should be able you should be okay to answer it theek hai like a theory x most likely believes that employees require little supervision are little supervision it is positive hai na ye theory y right are creative imaginative positive characteristic need direction and security solve problems outside their immediate control so need direction and security need to be scolded need to be threatened right that is all theory x answer c is correct okay are we good ek aur example uh, one more suggestion that i have is when you come across this new words like for example vicarious learning what does it mean yahan pe liya hai wo log ne observational learning but the point is that please look up the definitions and write it down here or the meanings here in the uh, corners of the pages right so that you remember theory x is a pessimistic guy autocratic manager and a pessimistic guy and theory y is an optimist he believes in the human being he believes in the employee he believes that people will uh, uh good things will come and people are generally positive okay uh any questions i'm going to skip motivation process based theories and all of that right i am going to come to job design job design mein job enlargement and job enrichment important concepts so job enlargement mein kya hota hai A variety of simple tasks as part of one job. Jobs are horizontally loaded. So imagine an assembly. Okay, assembly. Me, pehle cutte hai, fir first they cut something, then they stitch something, then they fix something, then they put it in a box. Now imagine you are the person who is cutting something. एवरी डे वो जाके आठ घंटा खाली काटी कटी रहे काटी काट रहे हो आप रूलर से टक 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 राइट एंड यू कैन इमेजिन यू विल बी बोर्ड टू डेथ राइट लाइक वो चार्ली चैपलिन के जैसा केस हो जाएगा और सर खाली स्क्रू ड्राइवर टाइट कर रहे ओके सो वॉट डू यू डू योर बॉस कैन इन लार्ज योर जॉब कि भाई अभी तो खाली काटेगा नहीं उसके बाद यू विल ऑल्सो स्टिच then you will tighten or you will fold it and then you will put it in a box that is job enlargement a variety of simple task as part of one job job enrichment kya hai job enrichment structures the job so that each worker participates in planning and controlling the purpose is satisfaction of social and ego needs and avoidance of routine work नाव पहले आप खाली काट रहे थे राइट 
now he's like okay you know what i will enrich your job so what i'm going to do is the scissor that you get for cutting right every two days three days you have to change the scissor you will go and buy that scissor you will go and select a vendor look for the best scissors find out if there are other ways of cutting the cloth right uh uh what else can you do from that uh what are the other designs in which we can cut it right so if we are making certain boxes then this is the current set of material that we use to make the boxes can you cut it differently so that we use less material right this is all job enrichment because there is intellectual curiosity involved there is some amount of freedom authority that is given to you right that is job enrichment so structures the job so that each worker participates in planning and controlling by you can decide which scissor you want you can decide which stitching machine you want to buy you can decide how you want to cut it but this is the objective right that is job enrichment are we clear everyone hmm so the same job but you are getting more control over the planning uh, planning and monitoring process okay job enrichment should improve motivation by vertically loading the job that is increasing its complexity challenge and opportunities okay जॉब एनलाइजमेंट में क्या किया वापस सिंपल टास्क खाली सिंपल टास्क ज्यादा दे गिवन मोर नंबर ऑफ सिंपल अच्छा खाली काटता था अभी काट भी स्क्रू भी लगा उसको बंद भी कर फोल्ड भी कर और फिर बंद कर बॉक्स को राइट सो इन द चार्ली चैपलिन वीडियो यू सो दैट देयर आर थ्री पीपल बट इन दैट केस एवरीवन वाज डूइंग द सेम थिंग बट जस्ट इमेजिन लाइक एवरीवन इज डूइंग डिफरेंट थिंग्स बट सिंपल थिंग्स So instead of you doing one simple thing, now you are doing four simple things. Whereas in case of job enrichment, it is the same same thing, but that same job is enriched by vertical layering. कि भाई now you are complete control of this particular job in the sense I am not just telling you do this. You can decide how you want to do, what you want to improve, what you need to change, provided the objective is met. Right, that is job enrichment. How are job enriched by Esper Hackman and Oldham? Improve the core job dimensions, skill variety, task identity, task significance, or completion of the task identity is completion of an entire work product. Task significance is the effect on other people. autonomy level of discretion over how the work is done feedback or the receipt of informants information about performance so if you been told ki cutting ka pura zimmedari aapka hai you decide the new machine the scissors the material all of that right and then you are given feedback oh you know what this new thing that you use is uh, really efficient the wastage has gone down by 10% that's that's feedback given to you about your change in the process which brought value to the company that motivates you right agar aap khali kaat rahe ho paper ya fiber ya whatever that is that you are cutting uh there's no feedback so you you cut 100 boxes this uh, today here is your 10 dollars tata bye bye right there is no feedback there is nothing beyond that but if there is complexity in the layers of complexity increase and then you get feedback about it then you get it's it's more fun to do that job <clears throat> what should enrichment do it should create three psychological states meaningfulness yaar ye main kar raha hu iska koi meaning hai responsibility oh i am responsible to reduce the wastage i am responsible for making a beautiful product 
नॉलेज ऑफ एक्चुअल वर्क आउटकम तो ये मैंने किया डिड इट हेल्प डिड इट नॉट हेल्प वट शुड आई बी डूइंग डिफरेंटली दैट इज दउटकम the critical psychological state should produce high motivation performance and satisfaction low turnover and low absenteeism i mean these are the obvious benefits however worker satisfaction does not necessarily lead to improved performance just because he is satisfied does not mean performance well it is more likely that a productive worker is a happy worker ठीक है द जॉब कैरेक्टरिस्टिक मॉडल इज मोस्ट इफेक्टिव फॉर पीपल विद स्ट्रॉन्ग नीड फॉर पर्सनल चैलेंज एंड अचीवमेंट सो देर आर सम पीपल हु लीव देयर जॉब यू आज देम क्यों अरे यार मजा नहीं आ रहा मजा नहीं आ रहा मतलब क्या और कुछ लोगों को मजा आता है वो 20 20 साल उधर ही निकालते हैं राइट डूइंग द सेम काइंड ऑफ जॉब और मे बी स्लाइटली डिफरेंट एंड देन देयर आर there are employees who are with the same organization for 30 years but are in no way doing boring tasks so it also depends on the organization how the organization structures their job and keeps people engaged if the organization is able to keep people engaged by constantly enriching their jobs then a person may stay with the organization for long right uh but if the organization is slow and there is no personal challenge and sense of achievement then those who are looking for for more meaning in their life leave for other challenges okay employee growth needs strength is the last building block of the job characteristic but people have distinct needs for growth and development yeah i mean my need would be different from your need any question so far okay. uh acha i need to go today thoda jaldi uh, someone who is there so i'll have to end a bit early my apologies for the audio today i'll download zoom and fix this okay and i'll also cover up on the uh, lost time next time theek okay? hai so 15 minutes starting mein and around 15 20 minutes now so half an hour is something that we need to cover so we'll cover that next time okay okay uncle. everyone yes sir yes thank yeah. you and uh, please keep your questions coming ping me on telegram or whatever when you are studying uh, if you have any doubts please let me know but study hard if you missed the video yesterday complete that एंड अभी तक जितना हो गया उसका एमसीक्यूज कंप्लीट करो प्लीज ओके यस ओके सर एंड एंड द थिंग्स व्हिच आई सेड दैट यू नीड टू रीड ऑन योर ओन प्लीज मेक श्योर दैट यू रीड दैट राइट सर राइट ओके चलो बाय थैंक यू बाय सर थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू बाय बाय थैंक यू बाय